What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And you are listening to Liquid Carnage. What's up, my friend? Oh, nothing much, man. So good to hear your voice. It, it seems like the week just goes by so long. We don't get to talk very much. And then all of a sudden, we get we get four hours of just pure bliss. Oh, dude. Wow. That was pretty good. That was pretty deep, though, huh? It was. It was very deep. It was very deep. Hopefully, uh, you're listening to this on a, It's a Brand New Day in, in America. I, I We have a new president. Uh, day one. I guess this would be day two. So, let's just see where we go from there. So, all positive things. All positive thoughts. Uh, it's time for America to get back on track. Well, today marks kind of a special day. Not not a great day. Not a, like an important day historically. But for us... Um, it hasn't been released, but we are recording our 200th episode today. Two, we're up there in the same esch- upper echelon of friends, mash, cheers. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be a couple more months before we release our 200th episode because you know how we recorded a few, uh, like we were doing extras and we recorded a few, and so we didn't release oh, them. They're, yeah, yeah. they're like this is out in the middle of the, the, the vortex of life. So, but this is officially the 200th episode that we have recorded of Liquid Carnage. God, man, that's crazy. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And, you know, I don't even know, Kate, do you think you can remember? that long ago because i mean when we started this you were a young man and yeah i was i was still in my 30s yeah i still am but um what kind of got you excited about doing this oh man you know it's crazy you you think about something like this you you wonder like even just thinking back like what the hell why did we start this thing and it it started with uh you and i and our sunday uh, mornings at starbucks yes that's and right. Yep. We were we were talking about some friends that have that had a show and we're like, well, we could do that. And then one thing just led to another. And then we we just thought that we'd be that we just see how it goes. And we full disclosure, I think we offered a few people to be a part of it. And nobody else bit. Yeah. Just us. Yeah. Well, and <clears throat> we've talked a little bit about it before, but for those of you who don't know a lot about our history, we actually started uh, doing a radio program on Tuesday nights in Kingman. That's, that's when we started oh, yeah, with yeah. this idea. Yeah. The that man cave 10 years ago, man. 10 yeah. Months ago. Yeah. The man cave, it was called. And, and basically the premise was, is that two guys sitting, you know, in, you know, in, in the house or in a bar or something, having drinks and just talking about whatever. And the show just started taking off a little bit and then it got, it, it, it got turned off. And so then we kind of, like you said, we would meet every Sunday at Starbucks and said, wow, this would be kind of interesting conversations to have just around a, you know, a phone or a recording studio. So, yeah, you know, it, it, it's turned into something that's been pretty, I think, pretty interesting and pretty cathartic for us. I, mean, I think over the last four years now, we've we've had some fairly interesting topics and interesting guests and. And it's just been uh, it's enlightening for us. I think we've learned a lot about ourselves and about each, about each other through all this, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously that, that has been a, a nice, um, a nice blessing is that we, you know, we've become a lot closer, obviously when you, when you talk every week for four years, uh, you're bound to, you know, get to know someone over that time. And, and uh, we've known each other for, I mean, gosh, 15 years now. I think 15. Yeah. Wow. Long time. So, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I know that uh, that this is one of those ones though that I had never thought about doing a podcast before, so it was kind of a new interest, I guess, uh, for me to do it. Um, but uh, while sometimes I'm 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 painfully reminded that I'm not entertaining enough to like warrant millions of followers and viewers, um, I, I I do enjoy it. I enjoy it. See, I disagree with it. I think you are painfully entertaining uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and for for what I'm going to assume will be the 200 uh, episode or that we record today, uh, the EP will have comments, and I have every single comment from every single uh, show, every yeah, single actually, comment so from yeah. every single show. So, yeah, um, and he's been there since show one. Yeah, it's that's 200 weeks of him ripping us for not being funny, being too political, uh, what have you? Soapbox, think, soapbox, soapboxes throat punches, not being allowed to to pick topics for long periods of times, reviews of our performances. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. 
Do you oh. think that that hobbies and these kind of things only come as you get older, or are there certain things that no matter what, like from a very young age, you said, I enjoy this hobby and I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. I, I think it's something that happens as you get older. I think there's very few people that uh, can, can find a hobby early on in life and it kind of sticks with them throughout, you know, maybe in some other way, shape or form, you know, you talk about uh, sports might it being one of those uh, cooking, possibly fishing, you know, it, it, hobbies are something that, keep lets us let our let our mind get at ease and sometimes it keeps us close to the to the ones that we've loved before in our lives that help shape our lives what do you what do you think is your number one hobby oh probably cooking really yeah without a doubt uh, the kitchen time is probably my my biggest hobby um outside of that you know watching sports uh, not so much participating anymore but you know i think i'd call those my my biggest hobbies what about you Oh man. Um, well, yeah, unfortunately I feel like I'm a restless spirit. Um, I, I get, I get into like a, a focus of doing something that I enjoy. And then after a few months or maybe a year, I then switch it to something else. So right now my hobby is, um, I'm taking, uh, the Duolingo class for Spanish. So Isn't I, that a singer? What's that? Doesn't she sing that song Levitate? Uh, no, this is not Duo Lipa. This is oh. Duolingo. It's an app that you can get where you take, you basically can take uh, free language classes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've been taking Spanish for the last four and a half months. Oh, I didn't um, know that. That's great. Yeah. Um, I've been, uh, obviously, I read a book a week. That's a hobby of mine that I do uh, pretty regularly. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I played guitar. I, I, I've always kind of gotten in and out of guitar. And I've been doing that now for 25 years. So that's probably my longest hobby is, is playing the guitar. Wow. Yeah, that's true, man. You've, we've said there's been quite a few, quite a few nights we've sat around you, you and our friend Dina play guitar and to sing songs. And yeah. Oh yeah. We haven't had one of those in a long time. But um, yeah, I mean, I, so I, I guess sports is, I think that sports is one of those hobbies that I have always had that as part of my life from a very young age. I mean, I think if, if I were going to uh, put a hobby out there, watching sports, enjoying sports has been probably the longest hobby I've ever had. Yeah, I, I would say mine's mine's right up there with sports, watching sports and, and cooking. They both kind of came along at the same, the same time frame. So um, I, I would say those cooking kind of faded out there for a while. But I think once sports entered the world, they've always just, it's always just been there. You know, it's so funny that we're talking about this because one of the things that kind of hit sometimes for the people who listen to us and know us, you know, as well as we know each other, um, sometimes we we see something or something happens to us and then that becomes a topic. And we were driving around on Sunday and we saw probably 15 or 20 Jeeps that Mm -hmm. were all in a line and you could tell they were a Jeep club, you know. Uh-huh. And I lo- I looked at them and now we're talking about hobbies. I think, how did these guys get to that hobby? Like, I just want to be with my Jeep. And now, now that I'm with my Jeep, now I want to be with my friends who have Jeeps. You know, how, how do people get, find their hobbies? It, it's, it's really cool. Uh, well, I can answer that one because my dad uh, was a big Jeep guy growing up. They, you know, the first car my parents bought after they got married was a 1976 CJ five. And they had that forever. And that was when, when we were kids, they'd, they'd tow that and when we'd go camping and we'd drive all through the hills through Williams and Jerome and the Verde Valley and we'd go hunting in it and whatnot. And and he would always go through these jamborees and his friends always, you know, he grew up in rural Arizona back in the 60s and 70s. So that's what you did. You, you fixed up your four-wheel drive to go hunting and whatnot. And that's how he built it. That's how he became a big Jeep fan. And then he and his buddies did the same thing and they go on Jeep jamborees and it was just one of those things, you know. Well, and, you know, I mean, uh, Ricky, uh, Noreen's son, he has a dune buggy and he be, be laying, became part of a dune buggy group in, in Texas where they would mm-hmm. just go out into the country and drive around. And then they go usually go to like some place, have coffee and talk. And I thought, yeah, that those are the kind of hobbies that are kind of fun, though, because that's how you meet long lasting friends, usually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what our long lasting hobbies are that helped us, helped us meet friends? Who's, what's that? Uh, we, we drink. 
Well, that that could be considered a hobby or an addiction. I mean, uh, you really, it, yes. it's a fine line. It's it, a yeah, fine it's true. line. It's a, it's a fine line. But, uh, you know, I, I, I would say our friendship began because of alcohol. Um, my friendship with Dean began because of alcohol with, with our buddy JP, alcohol. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if if I look at the most significant relationships in my life, it, it's it's you know, surrounded by usually either softball, playing softball, or, or drinking. Yeah, that that's true. Whatever brings us together, you know, yeah. Whatever brings us together. Well, and look at you know people like JP. I mean, he's been in a softball league continuously for what twenty years, fifteen years, something like that. Well, he took that break when he lived in Phoenix, but yeah, for the most part, I think this is the first year he's not going to play. Uh, when the season starts back up, I think he's just tired and, and ready to ready to call it quits. But those, you know, those hobbies are the things that we need, I guess, because that's what keeps our minds balanced. Yeah, yeah. And I that's don't want to say I, sane because a lot of people could use that as the wrong term, but balanced. Yeah, well, you know, I think for the longest time, for me, my, the way to keep my balance was, you know, I'd go see movies. Movies were a big hobby of mine too; they still are. But going to the movies and and, and researching and reading about them and trying to figure out which movies i'm looking forward to seeing you know and, you know I, and when i lived in college that's, that was my one treat for the week like i'd get done with my homework i get done with all my my chores at, at my apartment i'd go around the corner to the mills mall and i'd, I'd go watch whatever movie uh I, I could find what do you think the biggest benefit of of a good hobby is or something that that you do outside of just your normal life uh, i think it, i think it uh helps center you it balances you it gives you a chance to to relax and reset and and just kind of clear your mind uh, yeah you know? from all the all the stresses that affect us all the time yeah i think that's got a lot to do with it. i think that's the most important piece to a hobby is it's it's hobbies are there to, to be uh, escapism if you will you yeah, know, I, I mean, because let's be honest. I mean, the we were talking right before we started this how crazy everything is. I mean, it's just it, it seems like right now it's a crazy, crazy time, and and people who who can find a way to recharge or rebalance, get their chakras or in order, man, it helps them out. It helps us all out, right? Well, I, I think over the last year, especially that we've been really testing how how we handle our hobbies and what our hobbies are because we've been forced to to stop doing a lot of things temporarily and it hasn't been easy for some people because a lot of my hobbies include going to live sports live concerts things like that going out to restaurants and and when you can't do those things i mean it affects you yeah i i'm i'm kind of with you because we we love to travel i mean we really mm-hmm. do and we just haven't been able to for a long time and it does have it has an impact on uh, on your psyche yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I picked up new hobbies or I tried to pick up new hobbies when this whole thing started last year. You know, I tried to figure out how to play guitar or whatnot. And that failed because of my attention span. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, well, not to mention your fingers get pretty bad calluses if you play for a long time. Exactly. But let's just go with the attention span thing. Okay. It's just like, I don't, I don't, you know, being locked up in my house for, for days on end, if I wasn't going to work and, and sitting there strumming on a guitar just wasn't, uh, wasn't ideal, but I did pick up, you know, uh, a little bit of wine tasting and, and learning the the po- positives and pluses and minuses of drinking wines. That's nice. That's been fun. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I picked up the hobby of of making my own distilled um, essential oils. That's true. You have. Um, and that's yeah. kind of a that's kind of a, a labor of love. I mean, and I think the the hard part is is some of these hobbies that people have. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of money to do the things that you know, for some of these hobbies. And, and that, that's, that's when, you know, it's a labor of love because, you know, I, 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 probably, I spent a lot of money on distilled essential oils, man. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's, that's actually a very good point. It's if you, if you spent a lot of money on nonsense, it's probably a pretty good hobby. Yeah. Well, and you know, uh, you know, like, like the, the essential oils, um, so far, I've really been the only one to enjoy the essential oils. So, you know, I, I feel like it's a hobby that I can't really share with anyone at this point, which kind of sucks. But I, I'd like to change that in 2021. Well, uh, we're trying. I, I think the the uh, horizon has us being able to gather again and, and being able to enjoy things like this. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I'm looking forward to my my mason jar of essential oils uh, to to sample and, and, and sip on. Well, I, I, I think that I'm pretty close to because uh, now it's been aging for three and a half months, so I'm getting close to where it's going to be aged enough where it'll actually be able to be used as a, a Kentucky essential oil. Ooh. Not lighter fluid, but an actual Kentucky essential oil. Yes, and that Kentucky essential oil. That's so. Right. Are you are you are you aging your your essential oils in in oak barrels? No, no, uh, I, I'm not. Only because I I need to do it fat. I mean, usually when you age uh, Kentucky essential oil in a in a barrel like that, it has to age one to two to three years in oh, order for it. To, yeah. So uh, what you do is you break it into smaller amounts, and then you just use charred oak chips. To, okay. Um, to the white oak chips, and you can just, and then um, the alcohol or the essential oil will start to bring out the the flavors and the colors, and that's what gives us its dark, um, its dark color. Uh, because all alcohol, no matter what you make, all alcohol when you distill it, it comes out clear. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, then, it takes the aging and the the, the the oak, in this case, the oak wood chips, the oak barrels, to give it that caramel color. Yeah, and and, and uh, I have heard that some companies actually, um, when they infuse it with like you know they some are flavored uh, flavored mm-hmm. um, alcohols that they'll actually uh, one of the things that they put into the mix to kind of speed up or get a darker color is they'll actually put uh, coloring in it. Yeah, I actually um, it's funny you mentioned distillery, uh, and I thought of this today when I watched I watched a video on Facebook about how to make homemade Kahlua. Oh yeah, and. Um, it was interesting because they they get that gets the color from the coffee beans, right? Mm-hmm. And just that whole process on how to do that, but that takes three weeks to make, and I don't have that kind of attention span where I can just go to the store and buy some if I'm gonna if I'm gonna drink that. Yeah, imagine making up, a, let's say, a gallon of your favorite alcohol, and then realizing I have to wait four to six months before it's ready to go, ready to be considered what we want. Well, that's, that's why you're. That's why you're making essential oils because it's it's a little bit yeah um, exactly easier easier to concentrate on and, and get excited about. Now, do you um, now do you and Janice have different kinds of hobbies that makes it difficult to uh, do together? Um, we, we just really haven't had the opportunity yet because both of our, one, one we each have the hobby of working out. We work out at different gyms, and that's been obviously difficult and then just the time but her job's crazy my job's crazy so by the time we both get off work it's too late uh but we try to find different things i mean we like to go out and have dinner and and watch movies and try to find different ways to exercise to to do to do together i think that's one thing that that it has been really good with noreen and, and and me is that i mean she has things that she likes to do that are totally not my bag and oh, yeah. i have things that she that i like to do that are not totally her bag but she's always open to hearing about my t- me telling my little stories or you know mm-hmm. marine's doing something i'll listen to her little stories and and so well, we I can share at least that's the, the key to it though too yeah yeah we can share at least the appreciation of it's important to you so it's important to me mm-hmm. um even though i know that sometimes she goes jason just stop talking about it like, yeah. cause I have a bad habit. Of, I read books and each, I, we've talked about this before. Each book I read kind of spurs a thought to read another book on that uh, topic and then uh-huh. read another book. Like right now I'm reading a book on the 33 strategies of war. It's a fascinating book. It's just the, the, a lot of things. And, and what they do is they take a historical perspective of what Napoleon did or what Genghis Khan did to support one of these 33 strategies. Uh-huh. Well, when I read that, I want to talk to someone about it. So I'll say, hey, Noreen, I read this in this book. And I know she's like doing, dude, I don't care what you read. I really don't. But she's really nice and patient. And I, I appreciate yeah. that. It's, it's funny because, you know, Janice will start doing that about, she'll talk about work. And the one thing I learned from a comedian one time was like, as long as you're matching intensity, um, you can keep the conversation going and nobody gets mad. And I want to hear about her day and I, and I want to talk to her about stuff. But at a certain point, if it does, if it doesn't interest you, you just you just have to match intensity and just just to get the conversation over with and go, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you know that's 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 what Noreen's done for you, and that's love right there. That is love. That I mean, that that's really yeah. important, you know. Yeah, but it has been cool. In the time <laughs> getting Janice, you know, she's been on a quest to make the perfect macaron, 
and the little French sandwich cookies that yeah. are like Oreos but more yeah. flavor. So Where is are those the ones where you have to put them in like the square box? And, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she had she had to have a surgery the first part of December, so she had two weeks off. Well, in theory, she had two weeks off. But once she was able to get her in the kitchen, she was going to make the perfect macaron. And she probably sat in my kitchen for a week uh, making them nonstop. And that was her hobby, man. That was her thing. And we have a lot of macarons. And they weren't necessarily perfect, but they're really tasty. And she doesn't want to make them again until she can make make the perfect, like the perfect roundness, the perfect crispness. And that, that's a dedication that I don't have because uh, I just like making cookies and eating them. Yeah. They don't have to. They don't have to look perfect. Or making but, food and eating food. Yeah, mm, that's it. And anyone that knows me knows I like my food. Do you think that that there is something in the definition of hobby that requires it to be something that you don't do just temporarily and then get off of, or does a hobby have to be a a long? Does it have to have a term that's a certain length? I don't think I don't think it has to have a term. I, th- I think we can go through different phases of different hobbies. You know, I, I think that goes a long way. I uh, I've had a variety of different hobbies over the years. It's just whatever you're you're passionate about for that that time frame, or maybe the the situation you're in, work wise or personal wise, leads you to to doing things that you would consider a hobby. You know. Yeah. And, and when you like when you talk about cooking as a hobby, what do you do to expand your cooking, like your knowledge or I mean, what kind of things do you do to expand or get better at it? I'm always researching. I, I'm always looking for the gadgets uh, that make it easier or, um, you know, watching videos on like shortcuts, you know, different flavor combinations that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Just things like that. Just kind of, kind of ways to to broaden horizons and and uh, and, and just try new things, but still, you know, enjoy the certain foods and, and the flavor profiles that I like. That's cool. And you make you make. You, I assume you cook for Janice and the family, right? Uh, you know, that's the other thing. It's like again, with schedules the way they are, I'm, I'm off work a whole lot earlier than she is. So most of the time, I'm just cooking for myself. On weekends, we try to. We try to do something, but it depends if we have the girls or uh, if there's other stuff going on. It turns out life is very busy, even when you're in a quarantine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I think there's there's been only really a handful of times when we can sit down and, and actually make a meal. But for the most part, if we're going to eat together, usually it's like breakfast on the weekends. We'll, you know, we'll either t- walk the giant loop around my house, which is about a three mile loop just to spend some time together, then I'll make breakfast or, or we'll do whatever. But you know, that's, that's, if there's a meal, that's usually it. Do you think that there is a, a wide discrepancy or difference between a hobby and an obsession? Yes. Okay. So, so you think that, that someone can have a hobby, someone can get, have an obsession and there might be a more negative uh, tone to an obsession versus a hobby. Yeah. I, I, I would think an obsession would last for a shorter amount of time and be a lot more intense, you know, as far as how people handle it and, and people approach how they do it. You know, hobby, I, I can, I can play softball for a season and take a, take, take a, take a year off or two and come back two years later. I'd still call it a hobby because it's okay. something I do to, yeah. to relax. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think an obsession is like, no, man, I have to get off work and go do this. I have to get out. I have to finish what I'm doing so I can go do that because this is, that's more important than anything else I'm working on right now. Does it make sense? Yeah, I think so. I think I, cause I was thinking we have a friend who has, um, who roots for a certain college team that is borderline um, obsession. Yeah. Borderline. And, but you know, yeah. he says, Oh no, it's just a hobby. I'm watching sports, you know? Yeah, no, that's an obsession. It, it gets to a point when when the hobby starts to overtake your logic <laughs> on other things, then maybe it's gone a little bit too much, you know. Yeah, in fact, in fact, he and I had a conversation the other day. We were, we were we had a friend that passed. We were taking you know, stuff out of his house to the the goodwill and whatnot, and we were talking about uh, the championship college game last week, and it was a very shitty game. He didn't want to talk about because his team got their ass kicked. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> and I was like, well, what? you want to talk about the Clemson game? I mean, I, I, I figure uh, this this game should be just as fair because it, it was a lot of fun for a lot of us to watch. Oh, and, 
you know, but I, I think if you find people that are that are that obsessed with, you know, things like that, if you can't poke at them and razz them, it's not it's no fun. Well, and I, and believe me, I think I I want someone who has uh, the things that they're passionate about. I want it to bring joy to them. I want to bring happiness. And when someone like we had a friend who was so obsessed with his football team that they lost the playoff game and he was actually burning the jerseys and burning his paraphernalia. Of oh the yeah. Team. I remember that. And I was like, see, this doesn't seem healthy to me. Like that, that's not a healthy hobby. If you yeah. get so angry and worked up over something. Yeah. You, you know, the first thing I thought of when, when the Cardinals were, were eliminated from the playoffs this year, it's, my January is a whole lot less stressful on weekends now. Hey, my after Saturday, my my rest of my football season is no more important now. Exactly, it's that now. It's whatever. If I don't see a game, I don't see a if game. If I don't see, like I, I don't, I watched that game and didn't watch any other one. Yeah, the, my thought automatically shifted to. I wonder what I'm going to make for the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't care about the game. I care about the food. Oh my gosh, sometimes that's a hobby right there. I mean, just oh, preparing yeah. for the Super Bowl, knowing there's going to be the big party, there's going to be the square sheet so you can make the bets, there's going to be the prop bets. I mean, well, that, that's you know, I think for me, that, that, that the, the meal planning uh, in preparation of research is, is, is the hobby for me. That's the fun part because you want to you wanna find like a fun, unique way to take a something that you would have normally and just make it fun for the occasion, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's be honest. I mean, after last year, I'm looking for things that bring happiness to my activities. Like outside of work, I want to be able to do a hobby that makes me feel good and makes me feel like, oh, I like you like you said earlier, I feel like I'm balanced again. I'm back normal. Um, I yeah. don't want hobbies that stress me out. man. I just don't want hobbies that stress me out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm over that. I think it's I'd like to find things that relax me. I can hang out and, and do. And if I don't get to, it's, it's not the end of the world, man, but it's just something that can get me centered. And yeah. I think as, as we get further into the year and spring hits and summer hits uh, and the outdoor activities pick up, that's when a lot of my hobbies start to happen uh, more frequently. So that's fun too. It's being able to go outside and, you know, go to the lakes and hike and, you know, camp. And to, to me, that's just, those, those are the best types of hobbies. Yeah, that was one thing that Noreen and I said this year. We really, because it was really stressful. I mean, Noreen's job is really stressful anyways. And she just said, you know, Jason, I just, I don't care if we do it once a month. I just want to go out in nature, go somewhere where there's no phone, there's no internet, there's no, you know, anything just to get away. So that was one of the things that we wanted to start looking for hiking trails down here in Phoenix or, you know, or activities where we're outside and, and away from, you know, computer, internet, phone, uh, because, you know, I don't know, there's something about nature that is really kind of awesome when people, you know, are out there and there's nothing but the wind blowing through the trees and, you know, it's just, it's just awesome. Oh yeah. It's the, the it, just the, those few hours of being able to get away. And I think that that's lost in today's world. Because everyone's so connected and wants to be so connected. They want to take pictures of them being peaceful out in nature. And they, and they forget to actually be peaceful out in nature, you know. And I, that's what I look forward to. I'm looking forward to the spring and the summer is getting, you know, up to Williams and Flagstaff and, and just spending more time doing that stuff. And that's what Janice and I were talking about, too. It's making the actual effort to, to go to Flagstaff and spend time up there or, or go get a cabana in Vegas and literally just sit by a pool for a day and just do yeah, nothing. I, I think that's, that's a, a, the key for us too, is I, I don't want to have to extenuate, you know, do extensive strenuous stuff. I just want to enjoy. And if we go for a hike and we want to stop and not go, you know, and just kind of sit for a second, I don't want to have to feel like, Oh, I got to be somewhere by a certain time. Yeah, that's it. Like, I'd, I'd like to be able to, you know, get back down to Phoenix and see you guys, and you know, we can go find a nice breakfast place because to me, that's that's a great hobby too. Is finding the new fun places to eat or just new places. Well, we to got try. we got tons of them. We're ready. And, we're oh, ready, I know, baby. I know. No, no, we're we're just trying to get the time off right now because I don't know if I don't know if you've noticed, but there's, there's a oh, COVID spike going on no. in the state. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm right? scheduled for uh, in, February 4th is when I get my second vaccine. Uh, I get mine on the 26th oh, wow. of, of All right. this month. All so right. uh, I'm uh, quickly Good. approaching, as it were, 9.30 oh, in the morning. Can't, not that I'm counting down the, the hours. <laughs> yeah. 
but but if you have a hobby that that you think is fun that you think we might enjoy uh, hit us up on instagram facebook or twitter all at liquid courage uh, if you have a, a hobby for our ep tom to give a whirl up in colorado hit him up at liquid underscore ep on twitter and instagram oh yeah let's let's let, and let's blood it man let's get so many ideas for hobbies on twitter and facebook that we just go holy crap we're missing out on all kinds of fun stuff oh absolutely absolutely i think the great uh hobby quest of 2021 should be a thing where we try to find a few new hobbies for us that we would to get us out of our our, our comfort zones as, as oh that's awesome well thanks for listening everyone man that was uh that was kind of a fun way to break up the last couple of weeks which are a little more serious so uh thanks for listening that was scott i'm jason and as always if you never know quite what to say just have yourself some liquid carnage <laughs>